So, Rob, who you trashing today? I'm trashing the schedule makers, Chris. I'm really wow. I'm really mad that we don't have any sports really going on right now. Feels well, basically very, you're talking about the NBA. You don't like yeah, the NBA by break, taking off this extended, right. yeah, taking an extended period of time off. Right? I mean, they don't play back until Thursday, right? Right. This this wasn't the way it used to be. It it wasn't this long. No. I get it. You give people a chance to leave Sunday or whatever, get Monday off. And and, and, and role players that don't make the All-Star team get a full week. Right. Think about the, all that, like a whole week off. Like, it just is too much. But I'm much. not mad at that. Why? I mean, I, I don't mind that. Now, now, that's one more reason you should be playing hard in the All-Star game. Because <laughs> you're wow. about to get a week or, you know, you're going to get several days off. And why you should play harder or or play more games in the regular season? You know what right, I'm saying? But, but 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 the point is, everybody's not at the All Star game. Eighty uh, percent of the league is at home. You know what I mean? There's no reason right. that you couldn't start the league up again, Chris, in two or three days after that long weekend. Even for I your star player, it. I don't mind really players. I do. Play. I'm just I'm just saying. I got I, no I'm, problem with it. There, there's nothing going on. I'm 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 bummed. That's all. Just bomb. You don't watch the games anyway. What are you talking I about? Do. What are you talking about? How do you you have my crib? You see my eighty five. Look you at my eighty five. You watch my eighty five inch TV, man. You ain't fooling nobody. Eighty five inch TV set. Shoot. I don't All need right, to see um, that to watch nineteen eighty five reruns. I didn't pay for right. that. So that's who you're you're trashing. So you'll get your chance at the end of the hour. Eight seven seven ninety nine on Fox. All right, Rob, um, Jason Tatum, I don't know if we have sound of it, but he spoke at the All-Star game. We do. And he's fifth right now, despite the Celtics being the number one team in the league as far as record, despite Jason Tatum averaging 27 points, eight boards, and about five assists, five five assists. Team highs, by the way, in everything, uh, at least in those three. 27 points, eight and a half rebounds, 4.8 assists. Leads the team. Uh, he's fifth in the MVP voting. Uh, and he had a, a a theory on why. Here's what he said at the All-Star game. Would I love to win? Yes. But, you know, apparently us losing the finals two years ago affects, you know, what people think of me now. So uh, I guess I got some ground to make up. But, you know, everybody who has a vote, you know, they vote. The crit- criteria is different. You know, everybody thinks differently. Uh, right, wrong, or indifferent, it is what it is. So you can't tell people what, they're, what they should look for when they vote. Let me say this quickly, Rob. I'm a voter. Uh, I do not hold what Jason Tatum did in the finals two years ago against him. That, that doesn't even enter my thinking on him in the All-Star or in the MVP race. Um, I think what he's saying, what he's responding to, Rob, because you heard it. He said, apparently. So he's not saying this is my viewpoint, this is fact. He's saying, like, it's out there that people are holding that against me. And he said that because on NBA Today on ESPN, Brian Winhorse said just that. Win- Winhorse didn't say he's holding it against him, but he says he thinks some voters do. Uh, I'm a voter. I'm not one that holds that against him. People are holding stuff from two years ago. If he had the best numbers this year, that's why. Well, he's not and with, here, and first of all, I, he I just doesn't don't have the best it. numbers. He doesn't have the well, best numbers. But I'm just saying, but I'm, I, just saying I, I don't. I'm gonna give you facts for why I think it's clearly not true. At least not with most voters, if not all voters. LeBron James, we all remember, he didn't light up the the world in his first finals, uh, and he was about the same age as Jason Tatum. When Tatum led the Celtics to the finals, Tatum was 23, LeBron was 22. They both averaged about 22 points a game, both averaged seven, seven rebounds, seven assists. Both shot, I mean, LeBron actually shot slightly worse, but both were around 35, 36% from the field. And for all the talk about Jason Tatum's turnovers in those playoffs, he had 23 and six games in the finals. LeBron had 23 and four games in those finals. And LeBron had not yet won an MVP. Two years later, I believe it was, LeBron won his first MVP. So that's my point in saying I don't think that's the factor or the main factor, or at least with me, it's not a factor at all, but I don't think it's a, that's a big factor 
as why he's not closer to the top of the MVP race. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've seen the NBA. We've seen uh, guys win the MVP, Chris, in the league. Um, I can think of Steve Nash. I think their Phoenix Suns teams, Chris, were overly disappointing, right? Like they didn't. In the playoffs. They, yeah. In the playoffs. Never got I, to I, the finals. They never got there. They won 60 games every year. All the other stuff that went on. They had a loaded roster, right? A really good coach. It was supposed to all that. And every year they, they never got to the finals. That didn't stop people from voting Steve Nash back-to-back MVPs. Right. I, I, I just don't think that that really factors in. And even before Chris, uh, the Joker, his two before um, not winning last year when there was a drum beat out there, uh, the Nuggets hadn't done that much in the postseason either. You know what I mean? And yet it didn't stop people from looking at what he did uh, well, last and, and year voting him. With no, 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 prior to oh, that. Right, 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 right. Prior to that when he won right. the other two. They hadn't done much uh, right. postseason wise, so I just don't. I just don't think that that factors in. I think it's what you said: is his numbers are very good, but they're not the best numbers. And so, so he's he's thinking he should be leading in MVP voting because the. Celtics I think he have- was just asked about does he would he like to win it? I think, but um, look, you can argue that he shouldn't be as low as fifth. Um, but here here's a big factor for me, Rob. And Jason Tatum is fantastic. He is a legitimately great player. But he is, I believe, and I think most people believe this, he is a scooch below the upper, upper tier of the league, which is only a couple of few players. Is that like a pinch? MB, a pinch, scooch, you know, sconch, whatever you want to call it. Embiid, Giannis, Luka, and Jokic. I think that's the, those are the top four players in the league. And Tatum is slightly below them. So I do think that, it's, and his numbers aren't equal to theirs. They rebound more. They, pat, they at least Luka and Jokic get more assists. Giannis is a world-class defender, as is Embiid. Like, they're just better. And so for, for Jason Tatum to beat them out for MVP, he I think he, he probably is going to have to maybe win a championship before people view him in that class. In that class. And even then, now his it numbers, still doesn't if his mean, numbers doesn't were mean a lot that you- better, doesn't mean that you would win. You know what I mean? No. Like say, say he wins it. See, his numbers are good. He's got the third best numbers. He wins an M- He wins the championship, Chris, this year. Next year, he's still to have to have numbers in order yeah. for people to just say. But oh, I, well. I think if they won it this year, Rob, if he led them to the championship, I do think the following year he he might be more of a candidate. It, 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 it he just yeah. He, I'm his not stock saying that, would rise. that they would. Yeah, his stock would. You rise, know what I mean? Like. But it wouldn't and, automatically mean no, no, that he's, he's got he yeah he's going to get it the next year, right? Um, now it's interesting because Shea Gilgis Alexander is second in the MVP voting, and I do think I I think Shea is about the same class of player as Tatum, which is that right that second tier. Now maybe he's in that first tier. I think we'll see. A lot of the thinking, Rob, is that you kind of establish yourself in the playoffs. That's when we really see the cream separate itself from the, you know, the shaft, if you will. So the let me cream ask you this: the crop. Let me ask you this. So, so, but Shay's so, never been to the playoffs, so I think is he getting the benefit of the doubt because we've never seen him fail in the playoffs? And I don't think Tatum failed because I think leading them to the finals at twenty three was incredible. But, yeah, but I think when people looked at that, the, when, what I mostly remember about that, Chris, is the turnovers. Even though LeBron might have had more. That was a big storyline. Because he had was, more in the playoff. He had 100, I think, in the whole in the playoff. He, was just, he just couldn't hold on to the ball. Like, like that was the thing. And, and it was like, that's sloppy. It wasn't like right. he was missing shots. You can't just turn the ball over like that. Um, so this year, obviously, Embiid's hurt. He's not going to have the game amounts. Uh, 
Does the Joker have a better shot again, Chris, now coming off the championship and what he was doing? He had a historic run in the postseason. Will that work in his favor this year? What do you I, think? I think he's got a great shot. Like you said, I think MV was the clear front runner before. But now he's out. He's not going to – he has no chance. He's missed too many games. Um, Luka is having a phenomenal year. Luka's averaging 34 points, Rob. Um, nine rebounds and nine and a half assists. All right, very close to a triple-double. The problem with Dallas and Luka is they're the seventh seed, and I think widely viewed, not think rightly so, Rob, as underachieving. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, I seventh agree. seed, yeah, you're they, underachieving. They should be, they should be better. That right. team went to the Western Conference Finals without Kyrie. Yep. yep. I mean, like, let's just – And some of that's on Kyrie, but it, it does reflect on Luka, Rob. You're the leader of the team. And you get You're a talent like that added to your squad, right. Chris. You, you got to look at it and say you you need to – and even if there's an issue with who has the ball and all that other stuff, that's for you to figure out. Right. How do I right. get the best out of Kyrie – to make us a better team. Like, right. like, and you could, again, you could say that's Luca. You could say that's Jason Kidd. You could say that's Kyrie. Bottom line is, I, it's hard for me to vote you MVP if your team is underachieving. Now, that's one thing if you just won the championship and you're playing with, like Denver, Rob, they're the fourth seed. And it's close in the West, so the, the, the seeds are pretty close. But no, even though we kind of understand Denver. Yeah, they could put their foot on the gas and maybe win 63 games, right? There's no reason to. Right. There's no and they're reason still to. close enough. They're still winning a lot. And so I think Luka, well, Luka is not the front runner, probably is um, Jokic. Because when you look at Giannis, who, Rob, he's putting up phenomenal numbers. They're underachieving, right? They're not playing as well as expected. And they got Damian Lillard. So I think Jokic probably is the front runner. I, now I would have Tatum higher than five. I mean Tatum. Well, who, who are the other ones that they there? have? Shea, Shea Gill. Well, okay. Shea, Rob G. You have you got you have the list. Uh, Rob G. Shea. Read the top five to us. This is according to Bet MGM. According to Lamar Mitchell, friend of the show, shout out to Lamar, Bet MGM. <laughs> yes, it was good seeing Lamar. It was in Vegas great too. seeing. I've seen Lamar more in the last. Uh, I know we saw him month twice in three than, weeks. Then I have seen month. Chris right, Broussard right. in a year and a half. Yeah, it's true. It's All right, so nice. top to bottom. <laughs> Whatever, Chris. <laughs> best odds to worst odds, one through five. Nikola Jokic, minus 130. He means a heavy favorite. Joel Embiid is actually off the board there at Ben MGM. Yeah, he should be. Idea. He can't because he he can't, he can't he's already win. missed too right. many games. Shea Gilgis Alexander, plus 210. Luka and Giannis actually tied for four, third at plus 900. So a big gap there between two and three. And then way down at plus 2,500 is Jason Tatum. Here's what I, I'm just, look, Luka can't win it as a seven seed. I'm sorry. I, 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 Russell Westbrook won it as a six seed. He averaged a triple-double first time. Which since hadn't been done, Chris. Right. right? And right. as we point out, his record was way better when he got a triple-double for that team. Yep. When yeah, it won. wasn't just pat, stat padding. Now, Jokic, Rob, did win it as a six seed, I believe. Rob G., can you confirm that? I believe he won it, uh, the MVP, as a six seed. So I guess that's a precedent for uh, – That seed. is correct. Yeah, he okay. So that's a precedent. Um, if Luke, if the, the Mavericks win 50 games, maybe, you know, you can justify it. But right now – I think you probably – I probably would have Tatum ahead of Luka just because of the, the wins and the team wins. And obviously he's a f- light years ahead of Luka defensively, and Luka's team's underachieving. Um, I think Luka's a better player individually, but that has to at some point, you know, parlay itself into wins. Um, so pro- probably right now it's, it's Jokic. It's Jokic. And, and I don't be, even what would that be? Three out of four, right? Three, yeah. And I don't want to say it like I'm disappointed, but man, right, and this is something we've talked about is the numbers today. Jokic is averaging 26 points, 12 rebounds, and nine assists on 58 precision. The numbers are crazy. But Rob, 
Jokic is 14th in the league in scoring. At That's crazy, points. Chris. Think That's about crazy. that. Yeah. And so the numbers, his points per game don't look incredible because you got, you know, four other guys averaging 30 and then several in between there and where Jokic is at. Shea, Shea Rob is getting a lot of love, and Shea is phenomenal. Uh, he doesn't have that second star, even though Chet Holmgren is emerging. Um, and I think that's, you know, they're the second seed, I believe, in the West. So that's one reason, you know, Shea is up there. But I don't know if you – I don't think you put him ahead of Jokic. But Shea, is, Shea, Shea has a shot. Shea has a great shot. He's 31 points, six and, six and a half assists. It, and, it'll uh, be hard, it'll be hard million. to pass up the Joker just just from the numbers you're talking about, Chris. Uh, and he's not that far. I don't know. Is is he out of the realm of possibility of averaging a triple double with the nine? He no. Nah, he's. I mean, he's in striking distance. I don't. That's think what he I don't will, know. Is it nine yeah. point? He probably whatever have to average is. about twelve assists. Yeah, the rest, the rest of, the, of way. the way or something. But he yeah. ain't. It ain't like out the ballpark. You right. got that I thought Rob, Rob he would average a triple double and win the MVP. Uh, that was my preseason 